Thank you very much. Um, live on Channel 4, please do not swear. Um, <laughs> I've had one beer now as well, so it could, uh, anything could happen. Um, as anyone who knows me will be able to, uh, to attest to, pretty much like Tom, actually. Um, <laughs> it's getting a lot of abuse today. Um, rightfully so. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's, there's nothing around that. Um, so, yes. Uh, I, uh, we, we like challenges as teachers, I think. Uh, that's probably one of the reasons we get into uh, the profession. Um, having said that, I don't think I've ever had a challenge quite like being the last barrier between teachers and going home or alcohol or food or whatever it is that I currently am being the last person on. Never mind being that person and talking about data. So um, I imagine if you could have selected the final thing to be on, this one is the one that would have been selected by Satan himself. So uh, yeah, sorry about that. Um, if you spoke to me about, um, oh, I've never used one of these before. These are fun. This is great. It's the future or just, yeah, whatever. Um, I, if you spoke to me whenever I first got into teaching about data, I would have probably said something along the lines of, oh, it's boring, I'm not, I'm not into it. None of us get into teaching for data, do we? Like, that's not what motivates us. Nobody goes, I want to go into a classroom and I want to look at numbers. Oh. If you're, well, actually. <laughs> why do I bother with the stand-up comedy show over here, but sitting down is brilliant. Um, Valid. Unless you're an economic historian, in which case, weirdo. Um, but yeah, if we kind of maybe draw the numbers at maybe like, yeah, I don't know, 1066, you know. The, the, people, scientists walk into my classroom all the time and go, ah, 1066. And it's like, yeah, we do more than that, actually, <laughs> to be fair. Uh, thanks. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to look a little bit how how uh, data can be used to improve, not just as, a, as like a department, but... Um, as an individual classroom teacher, because I actually find it really useful and interesting now. Uh, nerd, I know, it's one of those things. I actually get excited about the getting the all of the information that we get in the summertime from our GCSEs. Not about the results themselves, don't get me wrong, no. Uh, I was on a uh, honeymoon uh, last year, and I was pestering um, to try and find, I was, I was just click, clicking refresh constantly while my uh, new wife was sitting going, just stop it. We're sat in Thailand, the weather's wonderful, we're about to go to Elephant Sanctuary and you're refreshing things about data, you absolute weirdo. Um, and she's right. Um, so, um, which of these results is better? You've got module one, it's, it's not actual data by the way, you know, because all that, no safeguarding, so on and so forth. Um, module one, 56%, module four, 49%. It would make sense to your first opinion would go, well, it's the module one, right? But here's the thing that I think we all know about data now, and it's one of the things that Ofsted, boo, um, well, who I know, obviously, there's all of these things about um, data and Ofsted, and I think that's probably one of the things that whenever you heard I was talking about data, some of you maybe had some sleepless nights as a result of Ofsted and data. Um, you maybe wake up sometimes and go, I don't want to do data anymore, I don't want to do it. Um, but it's about context, isn't it? Because I've seen a lot, Tom post a lot about Ofsted as well. Um, <laughs> yeah, he does. It's quite. I think he puts on his battle armor first. Um, but uh, yes, yeah, so it's it's not. It's like context. It's useless. Absolutely useless. It's cold. It's calculated. It doesn't give us anything. Um, knowing the context, I know that module four here is actually a better result. Say these are GCSE modules. Say you do four GCSE, GCSE modules. With the context, module one's 56%, but the national average achieved in that was 52%, whereas module four was 49% with a national average of 40%. So this is the kind of thing that I look at in the summertime to see what do I want to do as an individual teacher during the course of the rest of the year? Have I got a module? And we all will have them. We all teach multiple topics at GCSE and A-level. What topics do we teach better, and what topics do we need to get better at teaching? And that could be on an individual level, because as I'm sure you're all aware, that there'll be people in your department who've got different specialisms. Um, but yeah, and also just as a whole departmental basis, if there's one glaring miss here, 
So I would say there's more gains to be possibly had here from module one. Now, if you took out it on the, we do um, AQA, for example. So this is uh, paper one is module one and two. So you've got, for us, for example, it would be the Germany module, um, and then the Cold War module. Paper three is Britain, Health, and the People, because medicine through time sounded just too exciting. Um, and module four, uh, <laughs> which is Elizabethan England. Um, I would look at this, and obviously, like the one that stands out here is is probably module three. So let's look at module three, and I, I, that's what my my priority for the year. And you can use this as an opportunity to empower staff. Can you get somebody who can go and then do do lots of research and reading and get all of those historical articles? And how can we improve upon the teaching there? But and I'm going to selfless. I'm going to I'm going to plug it because Tom said several years ago it stuck with me. He was like, I want Kyle to do a blog someday, and I was like, yeah, effort. Um, and then, yeah, I, I did it because effort. Um, and I, I've, I've got a couple of th um, things uh, published. If you go onto my uh, Twitter feed, um, shameless plug. This is completely shameless, and I'm okay with that. I'm egotistical enough that I will do this. Um, I, I've got a couple of extra things on date. If you want to go and look at the more um, kind of precise things on that, that's fine. If you don't want to, then, again, I understand because... Life. Um, so, I mean, uh, it's, it's, it's about asking questions of data. That's the most important thing. It won't always give us answers, but it can point us in the direction of questions. So, the first thing I'm looking at here is, okay, so we now know that there might be some parts where we're doing better than others, but why? And mine into that more, okay? So, for example, is it because there's a lack of specialist knowledge in this module three. So is it a knowledge-based issue? Is it the questions? Are we not teaching the questions as well in this particular module? So for example, this module will have question three on this is a compare the similarities question, and you can only talk about similarities. And uh, I, whenever I went to like an, uh, an AQA uh, meeting about this, they, they were open in saying that they believe that was the hardest question on the cross the entirety of the two papers, because students want to talk about differences, because it's easier, it always is. So is that the reason why? Um, or is it something else entirely? Is it curriculum planning? Is this taught at a time which is not as effective? So if you do a three-year GCSE, is this the first module taught? And then by default, do you not go back to it often enough? Okay, so it could be something along those lines. That's some of the things we look at. Now I'm going to fly through this. I'm going to put this up onto uh, the drive, by the way, because the intention of this is that I've got lots of takeaway things. I don't just want to read it, people. Um, you're all literate, I, I, I hope. Um, so. My thing is, why do we make it a focus point? Well, we can learn a lot about it as teachers, I think. Um, so um, what are we most and least effective at teaching, topic-wise, uh, the question-wise, as I've said before? And there's all the usual stuff, like it goes on seating plans, and somebody can check them and go, yeah, you know who your pupil premium students are, um, and so on and so forth. Um, Again, just, just a couple of questions you guys can ask yourselves and uh, across this. And as, as I said, asking the right questions, uh, which I'm pretty sure is the name of my blog. Um, but um, if you want to find that somewhere online, um, if you skip through all of the controversial stuff, um, like silent corridors, if you don't want to read about that, that's fine. Um, I, I don't want to get battered. Um, uh, yeah, look, I, and I saw a thing about I, I saw a thing about people not doing this, by the way, the other day, and I only do this so in case I get attacked for this. I only do this for staff. I don't put memes on my in case in case somebody hates that. And if you don't hate that, then I do. Um, so when we looked at this, we actually found that during. Um, one of our mocks a few years ago, we find that the students were actually quite good at the technique. So we, we patted ourselves in the back. But then we were like, well, knowledge is the foundation upon which all history is built. So technique is kind of useless if you don't know your stuff. So we find they were having trouble in kind of retrieving knowledge. So we looked around the school, and I think this is an important thing to do if you've got the environment in which you can do it is look around the school and steal things from other departments. One minute warning. Um, cheers. Um, look around and see, what, uh, see if you can steal things. And one of the things we find that the English department were doing, um, so thanks to them, um, we find that they were doing like just really simple quick win, five-a-day quizzes. 
once a day, and we, we started in year 11, we're rolling it back into year 10, is what we simply did was we said, right, here's a question, there's maybe two from one of our modules and one from each of the other ones, and really quick, five minutes, start of the lesson, let's get their knowledge up and ask the same question sometimes. Just get that knowledge up. And what you can do here is obviously like build upon it. Build further questions from it. Ask them why questions about it. Like This is just like an introduction to a starter. Spend the first 10 minutes going over things you already know. And also, the questions in the new GCSE are formulaic. You know question one on this module is going to be the same every time. The topic changes. So we created a bank of resources. Uh, which is just a sample from a question bank. It's got all of these tips. By the way, aesthetics are not my strong point, so it's bright colors, that's it. You can tell who's made the, 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 um, the resources in my department, because if they look nice, it wasn't me. Um, so this wasn't me. That's why there's stars everywhere, and there's cuts out, and it's grim. Um, I get a, a lot of abuse for this, understandably. So I've created this thing where you've got these different times up. Ah! Um, you've got all of these different things. We've got hints and tips, but there's also over 100 questions the students can do. And in fact, on the way here, I was marking a question that one of my year 11s has done uh, because they're, they've got a mock on Monday. So I hope that's useful. If you've got any questions, obviously, um, tweet me, read the blog, um, or kind of anything else you want to do. But thank you very much. <laughs> oh, actually, one thing. Can I just say, I'm going to do this at the very beginning. I practiced this about 10 times this week. Um, can I just say, can we give a massive round of applause for the people who organize this amazing event, please? Just massive, massive round of applause. <laughs>